Hi guys and welcome back to Car Focus. Uh, as you can see, my Mark II Focus RS is behind me and this is the topic of the video today. We're gonna to be discussing five things that I dislike about my Focus RS. Now, I won't say five things I hate about my Focus RS because hate's a strong word. There's not too much I hate about the car, but there are five things that do kind of annoy me. Um, and I think it's worth sharing with you guys. And then we'll do another video with five things that I really like about the Focus RS. Before we get started, I just want to say thank you to each and every one of you for subscribing. We've hit 10,000 subscribers now, finally, which for me, this channel is kind of just a bit of fun on the side. It's just a bit of a hobby. I, I just make videos as and when I've got a bit of time or as and when I feel like, really. So to hit 10,000 subscribers is a real achievement for me. And if you think about it, 10,000 people, if you put 10,000 people in a stadium or something like that, that's a lot of people. And to think that you're all here for my channel is really humbling. Anyway, enough yabbering on. Um, we'll head over to the car now and I'll go through my top five dislikes of my 2009 Mark II Focus RS. So guys, inside the car, and this brings me to a lot of the dislikes actually that I have. They uh, stem from inside the car. Um, the first one being this sound system here. So the infotainment system itself is 10 years old now. It's not horrendous. Um, you kind of expect for its age, it's gonna be a bit dated. And I can live with the sat nav and that kind of thing. And its features, it has Bluetooth phone, but it doesn't have Bluetooth audio, which is a bit annoying, but I can live with the features. The thing that I do get annoyed about is just the overall quality of the sound system. Um, it's just not very good. Um, it distorts quite easily when you when you want the volume up. The overall balance just doesn't sound very crisp. It it's just not a great sound system. And if you want to kind of um, you know if you're going to go on a long journey, you want to get the, the tunes up. It's just not as enjoyable because, like I say, you've got a bit of distortion. It's just not the greatest sounding system. And particularly when you've got a loud exhaust as well, you want to kind of bump the volume up to drown out any drown out any exhaust noise um, so yeah that's my first gripe with this car is the sound system and you could rectify that I could fit aftermarket speakers um, and try and maybe improve the quality of the system but I drive this car a lot of the time and the music off the windows down in the summer and I get most of my joy from the exhaust so it's not a hate it's a dislike and yeah that is my first one that immediately brings me on to the second one because they're kind of linked in a way and that is how many rattles uh, we have in the interior of this car now. Um, I'll just flip it around. So it's getting quite dated now, the interior of this car. And over time, things just become loose. And when you have a car that has a firm ride, it kind of aids in the fact that things become looser over time and then start to rattle. And that is my second dislike with this car. Interior rattles and squeaks. Now. This car does have quite a few. It's got a couple of little squeaks as well, which is quite annoying. Um, no idea where they're coming from. Um, and yeah, just in general, the car has quite a few rattles. So the door cards are probably one of the worst ones. And when you've got the music on, and if you've got a bassy track, the door cards just vibrate. Um, the internals of the door cards must be a bit loose now. and. Yeah, it just doesn't sound great with the music on because you can just hear the vibrating with the bass in the door cards. Um, yeah, there's just rattles here and there. The dashboard has probably got a few rattles and in the back as well, um, there's a few rattles. So, 10 years old, you probably have to expect it. I mean, my Mark III after a couple of years started to get some rattles as well. Again, like I say, if you've got a car that's got a really firm ride, I'm pretty sure it's gonna kind of rattle things loose over time. And it's a Ford, after all. I mean, Ford rattle is it's a known fact. I've driven the, the latest fast Fords and the interior quality is a questionable. Um, and when you use kind of cheaper materials, yeah, you are gonna get some rattles, really. Um, so yeah, that is my second dislike. Again, it's not the be all and end all. I can live with it. It's just if I think about it, I notice it, and then it does annoy me a little bit. Don't hate it, just dislike it. Anyway, on to the third thing. So the third thing um, 
is the the rust and weatherproofing of this car now it's no lie that these cars after the first couple of years quite a few of them started to rust on the arches um, it was just poor I don't know poor design from Ford um, poor rust proofing from Ford I mean stones would flick up against the rear arches and take some paint off and then it would cause rust the bumper would rub on the rear arch um, rub the paint off which would then rust and yeah and the underside of this car a lot of these Mark IIs, they do suffer quite badly with corrosion underneath, so on the subframes, um, various components underneath. Ford just didn't really do a good job underneath when it comes to rust proofing. So that is the, thir the third dislike about this car. And I'll quickly get outside now and I'll put the camera underneath the car so you can have a look. And I'll just kind of show you what a 10 year old Focus that's been used outside for most of its life looks like underneath. Right guys, I've already touched upon this on previous videos, but I did mention the, the rear arches. Um, you can just see, I mean, there's a bit of dirt on there, which doesn't help. That's not rust, by the way, that, that's dirt. But there's a very slight bit of bubbling, and I have touched it up a little bit in there. And this has been a problem kind of since the early days of these cars. And you have to get these arches actually treated, rubbed down and treated, and then a bit of PPF just sticking in there to stop the bumper from rubbing on the, uh, on the rear arch there. So yeah, that, that's um, part of the rust issue. But I'll show you underneath the car, if I can get the camera low enough underneath there. So, I don't know if you can see the rear subframe there. There you go. Quite a bit of surface rust. It's the same on the front, it's probably worse on the front as well. There you go, that's better. So you can see the rust there. I'll put new drop links on as well, you can see there. I mean, it's not horrendous, but these do tend to suffer quite badly underneath. And like I say, the front, the lower, um, the lower arms and stuff like that, they are quite corroded. And also the sills on these. The sills, if you don't jack it up properly, you can bend the sills and that just compromises them. And then the weather can get in there and it can rust the sills out as well. My sills are a little bit bent from where they've previously been jacked up and there's a bit of surface rust. I need to rub down, I need to try and bend them back with some grips, rub it down and put some rust treatment on there. But that's probably something I'll do over the winter. Um, and I've got a bit of downtime. Obviously I want to keep this car on the road at the minute. I don't want to be kind of having it stuck in the garage with bits stripped off it and stuff. So yeah, that's the third thing is Ford's uh, shoddy weatherproofing. And Fords aren't known to rust and unfortunately it is true and it is a reality of owning an older Ford. Anyway, that brings me on to the fourth dislike of the car. And that is, this is a very minor thing, but it's quite important and I'll show you. So, this issue is the cup holders. Now, let me move that out of the way. I mean, they're good for holding an air freshener or your key, but when you want to actually have a cup of coffee or something in there, they're terrible. They're really shallow. I mean, this one, yeah, it's really, it's probably all right for a coffee, but if you want to have a, a sort of a can or something, it's just really shallow. It doesn't really hold it very well. And this one, you've got these little gripper things here to kind of grip in a coffee or whatever, but you can't have one in because this armrest gets in the way, so you have to lift the armrest up to have a cup in there. And I just think, I don't know, I like to have a good cup holder, and compared to the Mark III, which had awesome cup holders, yeah, that's just another dislike about this car. So guys, the fifth and final dislike about my car, this is also one of my likes, but it's also a dislike, and that is the seats in this car, these beautiful Recaro CS seats. So, spin the camera around, we can have a look at these beautiful seats. They are lovely, but there is one major issue with them. I say major, for me it's not too bad, because I'm fairly short, but it's the height of them. How high you sit in these seats. You, I mean, my daily driver, which is a Mark III um, diesel estate, you sit much lower in that and you jump in this and you kind of feel like you're driving a transit van. And I just, I don't know what Ford were thinking when they, when they put these in, but why not put them a bit lower? And it was an issue they carried onto the Mark III as well with the seating position being too high and they even ended up lowering the seats. So yeah, you kind of sometimes feel like you just sort of sat on top of the car um, rather than in it. And it's not major, but it's quite a big thing as, 
when you're driving the car you're sat in these seats and you kind of it would be nice to be a bit lower but i'm five foot eight and you know it's not too much of an issue for me but if you're taller i could see it being a bit of a problem anyway guys that is it that is just a quick five things that i dislike about my focus rs now as i say i was struggling to find things that i didn't really like about it you probably think they're a bit trivial but yeah overall i love the car i didn't buy the car as a daily driver so you know you buy a car like this it's 10 years old that you're going to use on weekends and you can forgive it you can forgive it for its little problems you should buy a car like this expecting problems as well if you buy a 10 year old ford focus and you think it's going to be problem free then you need to wake up because these cars they do have their issues but if you look after them treat them well service them regularly you know do any any current any routine maintenance that you need to do they are pretty reliable um and you just have to accept the things that age related like infotainment and stuff like that. you just have to accept that because the car is 10 years old and back then it was good you know so yeah i'm still loving the car um no regrets in buying it do i miss my mark three no i don't miss my mark three when i have this beast to drive you know as and when i feel like it you know i'm eternally grateful to own this car but anyway guys that is it um some more videos lined up for you in the future i have a couple of cars to review i've got a new me and my wife have got a new daily driver you probably saw in my community um, section what the car is um it's an audi so i'll be reviewing that soon i love it i love the car and then i've got a caterham coming as well in a couple of weeks a 310r which i'm really looking forward to and i can't wait to share that with you guys um, so yeah, that is it guys. Until the next video, as always, take care and I shall see you soon.